Hi, um, I'm going to try and talk today about how and why I think that normal people has come to define a generation and I don't mean Sally Rooney's novel, um, not to do any disservice to her writing, but when I read it, and I read it in a day like everyone did, when I read it I found it slight, I found it quite superficial after the first person intensity of conversations with friends and I felt that she hadn't given herself enough time to find a new voice from her first highly acclaimed to her second highly acclaimed novel. I didn't find myself invested in the characters and I didn't I didn't really care about what happened to them and I came to the TV adaptation last week with no preconceived ideas that it would be any different and how wrong could I be like thousands of others I devoured it in two sittings and binge watched it and then went back to the start and re-watched it again just to savour each episode and the fact that I knew what was coming at the end brought added poignancy and since then I have just been living in a half world between the real life, if you can call it that, of lockdown and the world of normal people and I just wanted to try and articulate, um, which I've tried to in a piece and I'm also going to try to hear, why I think that it has just struck so many chords with us and it's not just the Irish in me and it's not just the fact that I am a mother of four daughters watching it or that I am a a teacher of many years standing who has invested so much time in inspiring and helping sixth formers launch themselves into the world um, but it evokes so many different memories in me about sixth form days and touches on so many of the themes that have become really important to us recently and I think have been concentrated by the, the current abnormal times that we're living in when we start questioning the idea of what's normal and what's abnormal now. It's also become the litmus test of my friendships. Um, everybody that I love got a text from me last week and I just was desperate to know if they'd also binge watched it and I just wanted to know if if their reactions were the same as mine and if if their soul sung in the same way that mine did um, in response to the what I call the achingly beautiful acting on the screen, acting that reveals the complex and contradictory, desperately insecure internal worlds of the two young people we see navigating their first relationship. Um, their relationship is tender, it's consensual, at times it's funny, the sex is awkward. Um, the other, the safety of the other, um, and the importance of the fact that they see life through a similar lens, a unique lens, because of the adolescent and geographic history they share. Um, also for me, the, the theme of the returned gaze, and I think that's really important, isn't it? It's how, it's how they see each other, and in a world where we are so obsessed with how others see us and the image that we present to each other, the curated, carefully filtered image that we present to each other that's given rise to so much anxiety when we try to marry the two, marry the external and the internal image at a time when no one is seeing us. You know, we're all, we're all locked away. Um, all we have is our own reflection of ourselves reflected back to us in the mirror. And most of the time we don't like that very much and we don't get chance to curate and filter it anymore. And that's hard. Um, it's really hard, but at the same time, it's also quite liberating. You know, there's it's no surprise that celebrities are going without makeup and posting selfies of themselves as they really are. It's a chance to be naked and Marianne and Connell are naked to each other before they even undress each other or themselves hurriedly because they see into each other's souls and I think that's what's just so potent and so powerful. We've never seen that on screen before and that to me didn't come through in the book but it comes through, my goodness, it comes through in the, in the TV series. And it's the allowing themselves to be vulnerable to each other 
and recognizing that that vulnerability makes the relationship they have so precious and so unique um, and also realizing that it's the only route out of loneliness and in that incredibly moving scene in his bedroom towards the end when they're both going into their final year and he talks about the time they were together in their first year as being the most perfect time of his life and the only time of his life when he wasn't lonely because he was really understood and you know we're all lonely at the moment even people who are living in houses with families and partners we're all lonely if we don't have that emotional connection and Marianne and Connell have that emotional connection and it's a beautiful thing and it's just a heart aching thing to watch it's heart rending and for those of us who come to it older with life experience behind us we know how precious it is and we long for them not to treat it as carelessly as they do and we want to help them communicate in a way that they understand what the other one is trying so desperately to reveal and in that scene I, I reference in the bedroom where he touches her hand and I held my breath at that moment and he kisses the hand and and he says I think it's pretty clear that I don't want you to leave and she says none of this is clear it's not clear for me at all what you want and and you want to just yell at them talk to each other you know bear your souls in the way that you freely bear your bodies and I think that's the challenge isn't it that's a challenge for sixth formers today it's a challenge for anyone today who feels frightened about revealing their raw innermost being and about revealing their innermost thoughts and desires and it's why the connection that Marianne and Connell have is so is so important and that we can learn from so well. Um, I think as a mother of four daughters um, I can still taste the promise and beauty of youth as I say in my in my piece we're given so few people to really truly love in our lives and what they have what they share is 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 so precious um but life is bittersweet and normal people resonated with me on so many levels i was a gauche 17 year old arriving in oxford from a comprehensive school in liverpool i felt socially intellectually out of my depth um and i would give anything to go back to that moment now with the wisdom and the knowledge the self-knowledge that i've acquired in the intervening years um to have the voice then that I have now and to do things differently but therein lies the power and pain of, of hindsight and that's why I think the, the older viewers coming to it find it also resonates with them. Um, I as a mother of four daughters hope that my girls all have a first intimate experience that's that safe, that real, that equal and that pleasurable. Um, they have a right to ask for it, they have enough, of, I hope they have enough of a sense of themselves and they've that they've inherited some of the wisdom I came to relatively late in life to ask for what they want and to remember that consent is freely given and freely taken back. I think that normal people needs to be a, a required PSHE viewing in the curriculum and I say this is ahead of PSHE for every 16 to 18 year old in the land um, because I think that we all have a right to ask for in a relationship to be celebrated, that all of us should be celebrated. I think many of us can admit to only living a fraction or being a fraction of the the whole self that they can be. Um, and I hope that that my girls have a relationship that I've seen in normal people where it's a benchmark for all the future connections they most that, that they will have. Um, even my romantic, most romantic sense knows deep down that first love rarely lasts that Marianne O'Connell, Marianne O'Connell probably won't either and sadly that heartbreak is an inevitable necessary rite of passage to adulthood but it's only by putting ourselves, our real genuine selves on the line that we can experience that and I think having the language to do that and being um, being fed the language to do that as we are so beautifully normal people um, will help us to I think hopefully escape the fate of of Rob that tragic end of Rob when you know male suicide and anxiety is on such an increase um, if only he had had 
the ability to to talk about what really meant something to him and what was really bothering him and and to find out the person that he really was and to express that that no one actually knows what goes on inside somebody else's head and especially now no one else knows what's going on inside someone's door and inside someone's room when we're all in isolation but when the white noise of the external world is switched off which is at the moment and all we have is our interior worlds to look into I hope that we all give ourselves permission to see that those internal worlds are beautiful in their complex and contradictory ways and that it's by learning to ourselves learning to ourselves listening to ourselves and learning what it is that really matters when you strip away all the rest of it and what makes us who we are the beautiful nature of who we are that will empower us so that we, when we do come out of this world that none of us want to live a high a, want to leave a, and live a life half lived um, I hope that it encourages all to be brave and authentic to see our vulnerabilities as character defining strengths and to help others understand us and to love us as we truly are and that's Sally Rooney's message isn't it and um, that's what makes us so extraordinary this viewing um, that it's our unique inner worlds and our external mistakes and our eternal longing that makes us all normal people and I hope that gives us some sense of the impact that it's had on us this week and that encourages everybody to watch it and to find in it the beauty and the mirror of themselves.